Again, it's Priscilla Batzel and Elisa in the Expressionist Art Studio Gallery's Backyard Studio. And we're going to do a geometric. And I've got little cards handy, handy hanging around places and leftover paint. I've got black gloss enamel I'm going to use for a catalyst this time. I've never done a geometric with this except for the cityscapes that I just did recently. I'm going to put some black, can some black paint on my canvas to begin with. Maybe it's, I think, you know what, it's just better that I make it the black gloss. So, I just got all over Elisa's butt for not putting diagonals on the city, and now I'm going to do the horizontal and vertical like I, like I need for geometrics. This is going to be really interesting. Even this is looking kind of interesting to me. I like black and white, too. Yeah, I love black and white. But I'm going to use my... I was going to use my favorite colors. There we go. So I'm just going to give myself random seeming different size outside my comfort zone marks that are somewhat evenly balanced across the surface of this. And I said that I would use colors that were lighter that were mostly pink. But I tend to change my mind on the spur of the moment, so it doesn't really matter. I, what I do know is it's good to start. <laughs> so if I can get a start, that's that's that's. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use some white, like I always do, near my neon multi-surface acrylic from Folk Art. And I'm just going to keep putting down colors that I like. So the white's not an acrylic. The white is an acrylic, it's just not an enamel. I, I know, I make mistakes all the time. But I don't edit, and you guys know that. <laughs> so it's up to you to, to understand that I make mistakes, and uh, that's going to have to be okay. Ooh, that was a big lump of paint in there. I hope it's out now. So this is a metallic red, and I believe that's from Anita's. And you can't buy the Anitas on my Amazon link, and I wish they, I wish you could. Then wouldn't that be nice? So I love, I love putting the paint down on the canvas and then going, hey, I'm done, because <laughs> it looks pretty cool. And usually, usually what? Usually I would start by now, but I'm having too much fun, and so I'm continuing to play for a while. And I'm trying to leave some white space because I'm going to be pulling my paint into those spaces. And I want orange. And I don't think I would have known I wanted orange until I got to this point. But I love orange and pink together and I'm not, a, not unhappy with orange and red together. And I am having too much fun. Except for when the wind takes my paint. one is supposed to be all pinks. And we're going to see how this works, because this is maybe more lines than I've ever put on. But that's good. It's good to do things differently to find out how they work. And I'm not thinking about this. I'm just doing it. I am thinking about ma forcing myself to move around some. So I'm going to move some of my colors out of the way about adding a little bit of brightness with this other orange. I like the bright orange better. I like the two of them together very much. I don't think I ever used that pink. And I didn't use that purple, but it's okay to limit my color palette. Not that I'm really capable of that. This is a new color from Master... Um, Modern Masters. I, I'm working to remember it. It's a, it's a really different color. When I finally poured out a sample of it after mixing it, I went, oh, blood. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got nice shimmer. It's also a, um, a matte metallic, which I never even heard of before, to tell you the truth. 
So we're just continuously filling in and filling in. And hopefully that means that I, what I can do, my plan is sort of to do as little pulling as possible and still manage to cover and see what we get. And yes, I'm capable of putting in anomalous marks like that. And we're just about as full as we can get, which may or may not be a good thing. Just hang it up like that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty cool. I'm good. <laughs> we're done. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I've got my cards, and I'm going to go ahead and dip a card. And I'm going to use the residuals from the first card. I'm going to give it a little press because the paint's getting sticky. And right now, I'm going to scrape off some of it, push it, push it down, and pull it back, and cover a spot on my card, my edge. I'm going to flip my card over to a clean side. I want yellow in there now. Suddenly. Because I can. Now I don't know why I never crossed them over, but it's not normal. And I am going to have to keep pulling my tile to the edge because it's a little bigger than the... So this is really different. And the black enamel started to set up somewhat. So it's not going to look like much of a geometric, I don't think. <laughs> but it will look like something. Might be an experiment no one but Elisa and I ever see. You never know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think um, my old style is different than this, and I like the how they how they how change the each other up. Like it came up like a flame. It's like yeah. I like the odd color. The it's like a flame kind of thing. The odd shapes inside of the geometrics. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to put my glasses on. <laughs> That'll probably be really helpful. Yes, we're recording, just in case. Elisa's husband is coming back around 1.30ish, maybe. Honey? Elisa's husband, Mike, is coming back at around 1.30ish, maybe. Okay. We are recording, I said. Well, if ever there was going to be a pot potential for making muddy colors, this is probably that. But I'm just going to follow through. And you know, it doesn't matter what you start with, because you can always add chain, basting brushes, and... Uh, right. Are there certain colors that get muddy easier than others? The dark purple with the orange do. Mm -hmm. See how I'm going back and forth? I've been waiting for a long time to, to go like, yeah, I told you how to do that, and then it came out badly. <laughs> it's okay. But no, I'm not, I'm not saying that yet. So I'm going to push that color and into a little puddle, and then I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to put down the residual. I'm going to notice there's some canvas. Use that as my opportunity. You can pick up your card. And get different textures. You can use the residual anytime. It's going to be different. It's going to be the colors I like anyway. You can definitely use the residuals to make marks. Change up the pattern. You can take paint from one place and move it to another. Move it to another. The one thing I didn't do in here, which I really do like to do usually, that I'm going to do now, maybe. <laughs> I'll get that anyway. No, you're, you're fine. Um, there it is. There's my Anita's Metallic. And I don't just like to have the negative space. A lot of times it'll make... more interesting. I'm going to dip that right here. Right over. Oh. 
Now you can see I'm not spending a lot of time thinking about this, but I am changing up what I do every time to a certain degree. I'm not doing the same length mark over and over again. When I see that I have something that's anomalous that doesn't go, I'm willing to let go of it. I'm tapping down. I can squish my colors. That makes a different pattern. Generally, I start with a lot fewer colors or cover a lot less area. I don't know how to say that. I'm trying to notice what's happening with the colors that I'm using so that I can change that up. Whoa, we got a microburst coming, I can tell. It doesn't matter if you leave spaces. Sometimes when I leave spaces, what I like to do is add white paint into them because I like how they look. Now I, know that I knew there was some black on that card. All I'm trying to do is fill in my canvas. But the canvases are primed. If you ever get to a point where you really like what you've got, you don't have to worry about filling every bit of the canvas unless that's what you want to do. So now I notice I need some, I need some paint along this edge. And I'm going to take the paint. I'm going to try not to interrupt too much. But look how pretty that is. That's not even muddy. I'm going to steal some of that, actually. <laughs> I mean, it is definitely paint pouring because the pouring medium in the paint is what's whoop, <laughs> is what's doing a lot of strange stuff. I'm going to mix that over, pull it back, just so I have enough paint. And I have been going over consistently and filling in my edges, more or less. It's always nice when you have a, a dirty pour cup or something and you leave a little paint in the bottom. It's not as easy with this, because unless you have paint to steal from somewhere like that, you're not necessarily going to have all the extra that you need to cover an edge. But it's cool with this particular style, because you can go back and just add a solid color. I see it got heavy paint there. Fill that in. What do you think? So far so good? Now after I get to, after I get through this stage, I can take the small card and go in and pull some more textures. Or I could add some white. And if my edges are a little mucky orange in places, who cares? I can put bright color over that tomorrow if I want to camouflage it. I can also, right now, I kind of want to try something. I've got, oh, I've got that purple we had left over and um, a little card. And so I'm just going to dip, dip that card in. Go right over that bug. <laughs> it's just putting more texture on it. <laughs> yeah. More texture with wings. I like to rotate it a little bit once in a while to see if there's some place that I feel would be beneficial. I have this black, and the black is making me want to try it at least once. Oh, and it's setting up. All right, time to put my little lid back on before that's too late. Ooh, I like that. I like the black. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I don't mind when I have little anomalous holes, even though I went back and filled that one in immediately. <laughs> I'm just going until I feel like I'm done. And this is bothering me. And then I'm going to go put a little tiny bit of white. Am I? I am, if I get a chance. That's the 
you need is pearl, which does not come out very white. So let's try some regular white. I think I'm almost done, which means I want to tell you guys in the audience who are watching, I do sell my artwork. I give classes at the house in Spring Hill. Hi, Elisa. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we have a pretty good time every time, pretty much. So far, so good anyway. I guess I forgot you guys were here. I was just talking with Lisa a second ago and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm making a video. I don't know, sometimes it takes me a day to love my stuff. I want red and then I'm gonna call it good and we got 56 seconds before I have to tell you guys whatever I'm gonna tell you. I like the red. The red worked. The red was the distraction my eye required. I don't think I have too much canvas left. I know it's. I said it wasn't important, but I'm a little OCD, so sometimes it is. <laughs> I don't see anything else. Do you see anything I missed? Nope. I'll find it after. <laughs> I always do. There's always something I can see. I can't see it until I get in the sun. All right, so I'm going to quick torch, and that was fun. That was maybe more colors, like I said, than I would. I'm used to using. You know what? This is bugging me. Now I have a little more square. So I'm going to reach you guys as I. As I torch, I'm going to say, if you guys watch the commercials, you help me out. If you watch the videos longer, it's the only thing that the YouTube algorithm really understands. We did get some nice cells from using the black, the black gloss enamel. I torched to release the bubbles in the paint. My paint brewing recipe is under the video. Every time I see a little puddle, I want to pull it. <laughs> I love you guys. There's 85,000 of you. If you want to give me... Uh, some assistance, not only watching the videos, but uh, by helping support the studio. If you contribute to PayPal or Patreon, which links you can find underneath the video or on the channel, the icons are on my channel header. Um, it's a $10 minimum to get in the monthly drawing. And there are a choice of eight paintings and two, one of each of my books. And if you're in Spring Hill, you might have a chance to win or somewhere, anywhere in Florida. I'm going to give away a class also. So. Facebook groups, Expression to Start Studio Gallery Appreciation is for students. Expression to Start Studio Gallery Totes and More is for shoppers. Find the Shop Now button, go to findartamericapixels.com, see cool stuff. Um, Facebook, Expression to Start Studio uh, Fans and Collectors is for fans and collectors. Underneath the video, Expression to Start, <laughs> now, la, 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 la. excuse me, Teespring Clothing, all over print t-shirts and leggings, and um, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram links. If you give me a thumbs up, I really love you for that. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you come again. Check the community board for tomorrow's video. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye, Elisa. Bye. <laughs>